what I've got here is a whole pile of pinned CPUs. Now I've already taken the copper heat sinks off the back and what we're left with now is nice gold pins. Some of them are quite big, some of them are quite small. So they all have the same thing, all got the nice gold pins. So in this video, I will be removing the pins, processing them, and we'll see how much we get. Now there's not a lot here, so I'm not hoping for a whole lot, but I was also told that a lot of people don't get large volumes of things and they're happy to see small amounts being processed. So that's what we're going to do today. G'day viewers, welcome back to another video. As you would have seen in the intro, we've got all these pinned CPUs and we're going to start processing these today. All the heat sinks have been removed. Now I've got to get my heat gun and we're going to heat these up and get all the pins off and start treating them. See how much we can get. Alright, so this might be a little bit noisy. I don't know how much you're going to be able to hear. So I'll just do it without talking. Um, we're going to get the heat gun and heat up these pins. And I'll use these little tiny cutters. There's usually a little square bit in the corner with no pins. And I can grab hold of it nice and easily with that. I won't do all of them on camera because it's going to take a while. So basically I hold them like that, heat them up and just bang it on the tin and they should all fall off into the tin. Or I'll just wipe it with the tip of the uh, heat gun, wipe them off into the tin, same thing. I only just turn the uh, heat gun on and with this one it takes a while to really get hot there we go, they're all coming off now and there you go one clean heat sink um, CPU make sure there's no pins on the machine I'll turn it off and show you nice little pins in there now these little little things here a lot of people mistake them for MLCC's to my knowledge they're not MLCC's don't quote me on it if I'm wrong someone can tell me for sure but I was uh, told that these are some sort of resistor so uh, wouldn't be too fussed about trying to keep those you don't really need to separate them. They can go through the process. They're not going to do any harm. So uh, I'll just do all of the heat sinks. And I'll get them all in there like that. And then come back. Because it's just going to be boring watching me do all of them. Uh, all removed from the CPU boards. And as you can probably tell. I think you can see. There's uh, solder on all the pins as you would expect from you know coming off a, a board of solder like that so now the next job is to put all these in a beaker and remove the solder because the solder has tin in it and the last thing you want anywhere near your gold solution is tin it's the worst thing ever and it make it all the gold go colloidal which means super super fine and it will just float in suspension um, it, your filters get blocked up there's all kinds of problems when you've got some tin in your solution so we need to get rid of the solder before we can continue I've got a um, tiny little beaker with the pins in there and some hydrochloric acid as you can see there's quite a good reaction that's all the solder being consumed and I'll give it a stir in a minute to make sure that it all gets acid on it. So now I just leave it until the reaction stops. There's plenty of hydrochloric acid there, more than enough to do the job. 
So I know when it stops, there's no more solder. Okay, it was late afternoon yesterday when I put this in hydrochloric acid. So I just left it overnight. Now, I'm gonna pour off the acid. Is that a leg? I'm not sure what that is. A soft bit of relief or something. I keep this acid as used nitro I used HCL. I keep all my acids. It's uh, good enough to use again for say removing tin from boards, things like that. Let's give us a thorough rinse now. Okay. So now I'm going to put some water in there. Doesn't need to be much. Just enough to cover everything. And then a little bit of nitric acid to consume whatever the pins are made of. It could be copper, could be steel. So get a pipette of nitric. And how many grams is that? Uh, can't quite see without my glasses on. I think it's half a mil. See, it's already starting to fizz. I mean, usually when nitric reacts that fast, it means there's copper in there. Because copper is highly reactive to nitric acid. So I would say that it's nitric. I'm uh, um, attacking copper. Now I'll put it on, on some heat and I'll know when I need to put more nitric because the bubbling and everything will stop. Now I'll add a little bit more and when nothing happens, there's no bubbles, no fumes, I'll know that all the legs have been eaten and we're just left with the gold. Okay, so I've had it boiling now for about an hour and I've been topping up nitric acid every time the, uh, the reaction stops. And I'm pretty sure now that everything's been consumed. When I put more nitric in, it still fumes up, but I think it's just burning off the nitric. Because by now, everything should have definitely been consumed. So I'm going to filter it and have a look. I've taken it off the heat and I've filled it up with cold water, trying to cool down the solution so that it can be filtered. And now it can be held, but it's warm. So I'm just going to leave it for five minutes or so. Hopefully a lot of the sediment will settle because you can see it's not um, see-through. I'm going to filter it, but I'm going to try and leave all the sediment in the bottom. Because just in case there is still metal in there, if I can leave most of it there, I can rinse it out, keep rinsing it into the filter, and then start a whole new batch of water with nitric in there and just see what happens. And it won't matter about this filter because I'm going to use this eventually anyway. When I finally get everything dissolved, I'll pour it all through this filter and catch all the gold. So then I can put it in Acarugia. So I'll just give this five minutes to, to cool a bit more because I just take it off the heat. And if I can hold it now, then the water's done a good job. And um, so we'll filter it soon and see what happens. Not sure how well you can see this because it's getting dark. But I've rinsed it um, thoroughly. There was rust in there, which means there's steel decomposing from the nitric. And it feels really heavy. Now, I know gold's heavy, but the amount of gold that would be in there is not enough to make it feel heavy. So there must be still some steel in there or something. It doesn't feel as if it was just a little beaker full of some gold. So now that it's been rinsed, I'll put some more water in there some more nitric and see how that goes.
I want to consume all the base metals and just have gold. As soon as I put the nitric in, I've got an instant reaction and it's not even on heat. There's a lot of copper in there because copper reacts like that. Copper is highly reactive to nitric acid. Now it's a crazy reaction straight away. I better put that in the beaker in a, in a container before it overflows. There it goes, it's overflowing. The um, nitric bath has finished. It was yesterday, today's another day. Some gold floating on top. There's a whole lot of liquid I don't need. And then there's all the gold at the bottom. Now, there still could be some steel and the copper and so on in there. But because it's so full now from adding so much nitric, um, there's a risk of boiling over. So I'm going to pour off the solution into a filter to catch all this floating gold. It's the same filter that I'll use later on and I'll get down as much as I can and then start again some more water and nitric and I'll just keep doing that until there is nothing to dissolve. So I've got two filters going. Uh, they're only small filters. I've run out of, run out of my big ones. <coughs> and I've nearly finished with uh, pouring this out. As you can see there's not much left. Uh, any of the bits of gold that have gone over that you can see on the paper they would have no metal left on them they're too light that's why they're floating but anything that's got metal on it usually would still be at the bottom so um, when I can finish pouring this off then I can put some new water in there and some more nitric acid it looks like it's finished but I'll find out for sure better to find out for sure and have a nice clean solution than to rush it and end up with a dirty solution. Okay, so all the legs have been consumed. All that's in there now is loose gold foils. And those little chunky bits you can see, they're uh, the resistors that were in there. They're no big deal. We can filter those out once it dissolves the gold. So I'm just uh, getting rid of the nitric solution in filters. And then I'll put all the, I'll tip, make sure all this gold goes into a filter. And then those two filters will go in Acarigia once I've rinsed out all the blue colour. Try and get it as clean as I can. I'm waiting to put all this gold solution because if I put it in now it'll just block the filter and it's already going slow with gold that's in there. So I'll wait until they're empty and then I'll put this last bit in. That way it won't block up so quick. So there's all the gold that's in one filter and that's going to go into this beaker and then I'm just going to wait for that one to finish because that's got gold in it too and then we'll do some acarigia. Uh, the copper is all, the copper, <laughs> uh, the gold has all um, filtered, looking nice. So we can take this out now. Put that in there. Look at that. Nothing in the filter. No. Nothing in the funnel, I mean. Okay, so now time to put some acarigia. I'll set this up here so you can see. You can see, yep. I'll reach over and get the hydrochloric acid. And then a pipette full of nitric. That's all you need to do, it's just a pipette full. You can always add more. I say this in all my videos, and yet people don't listen. I still see videos where they're doing a ratio. You don't do ratios because you end up wasting nitric acid. Um, I don't know if the Indonesians or Indians or whatever they are that do it at a ratio they might be able to buy it at 30 cents a litre or something but I can't and I know many people who can't even get it let alone afford it so I don't waste it by denoxing it unless I really really have to so now I put it on the heat and dissolve the gold 
if the reaction stops I'll put a little bit more nitric in and so on and so on until it's all gone that's the next day it's all been uh, heated and cooled down now it needs filtering I just did a Stannis test and you can see it's positive for gold so now I'll filter it and then we'll be able to drop the gold it's filtering through nice and clear so that doesn't need a second pass sometimes you put it through twice but that's nice and clear it was a very weak response to the Stannis test so it's showing there's not a lot of gold in there but we'll find out soon usually if you get a really dark stain instantly you know there's a lot of gold and as you saw it wasn't exactly black but it took a few minutes to show which usually means there's a very small amount of gold but we'll get what we can out of it okay time to put some iron sulfate in I'm not expecting a huge color change because as I said it's very weak but we'll see what happens it's been two hours since I put the iron sulfate in and you can see the gold has been dropping it's still very cloudy in there which means there's more to drop um, by tomorrow it should be nice and clear it'll still be green but still be, be, be clear uh, there's not a lot in the bottom which I wasn't expecting a lot we didn't have many pins to start with either don't forget so you know I'm not expecting much but I'll be happy with whatever I get you know whatever I get's better than nothing so we'll see what it's like tomorrow it's the next day now and the gold has settled you see what I mean about the clear solution yesterday was a bit cloudy now it's nice and clear so I'm going to pour off the solution carefully try and leave all the gold in the beaker a lot of people I see on videos they catch the gold in filter papers I personally don't like doing that because whenever I've tried to melt gold in a filter paper it's always the bit, bits of paper have flown out of the out of the melt dish and you never know if there's gold on there but by keeping the gold in the beaker you're able to um, wash it and everything in there and just pour it straight into a melt dish and then melt it while it's wet um, the, the fire puts a crust over it stops it blowing out it's just so much better Anyway, we didn't get a lot of gold as I expected, but we didn't have many pins either, so it's quite good, I'd say, for, for the amount of pins that we had. Um, this is all the gold so far from the last few videos, so what I'm going to do is uh, just wash this a couple of times with some hot water, and then tip the gold into there. There's not enough there to show you, they wouldn't even register on the scales, I don't think. So uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll just put it all in there and each time I do a video and when there's enough in there I'll refine it and melt it. There's no point messing around and wasting gas on tiny amounts of gold. So I hope you've liked that video. I appreciate you watching. Um, any questions let me know, any comments, be welcome to put in the in the comment section. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.